Hello everyone, on today's video we're going to be walking you through uh, the process of getting the Gemini space capsule ready to go, as well as uh, taking a gentle little EVA. Uh, before I get into that though, uh, I did make a video previously where we were actually going to go ahead and do a rendezvous with the Agena capsule. I found out the hard way that when you do that, you have to keep in mind that if you have a certain setting under realism turned on, it can actually make it more difficult to rendezvous. So just a quick little piece of advice. Uh, if you have your settings under realism done, there's this little piece of here that says simplified rendezvous. Uh, you want to kind of keep an eye on this and uh, make sure this is shut off if you want to try to do it conventionally or turned on if you want to basically fly at it once you get to it. This is a mistake I made. I just wanted to share that with you. All right, let's get started. All right, here we are. We are all set, trapped into the front of this uh, gigantic Titan II GLV. Uh, the purpose of this mission, of course, is just to go ahead and take a look at the different settings and kind of play around with some of the options. Uh, you've seen me already fly Gemini before. It's uh, quite a bit of fun, and I've really gotten kind of the hang of this. I like it better than Mercury in the sense that it's got the computer and you can do better stuff with it. I don't like it as much in Mercury in the sense that it's a little bit more complicated, but I do really enjoy this rocket. Now, we'll have some fun with this today. So let's go ahead and uh, walk you through kind of the basic steps here. So we're going to be doing an EVA today, so we need to make sure we have plenty of oxygen on board, although that's really not going to be a problem for us, as you're going to see. So we're going to go ahead and make our way through the checklist and uh, take it all the way to launch. Well, let's get started. So first things first, we're going to do our interior inspection. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. We're supposed to be turning on the flashlight. Uh, that's just hitting the F key. All right, we're going to find the cabin lights, which is this handy dandy switch on the top. You're going to click that on. There's also this little thing in here that allows you to actually control the brightness of the cabin itself. Some people like to set it really bright. Some people like to set it really, really dim. Personally, I like to kind of leave it somewhere in there. I'm going to shut my flashlight out if I don't need it. So what we do now is uh, after we've set that all up, we're going to get the coolant pumps turned on. Remember, when space, one of your biggest problems is overheating. I know a lot of people think that's not how that works, but believe it or not, that's a common problem. All right, I'm going to flick that one on. We're going to go ahead and set this to the O mode. Flipping over here, actually, it's mode zero. Again, we're just sitting here pushing a bunch of switches, making sure everything's all set. Uh, we're going to come flip over here. We're going to flip that one. Again, these are mostly your circuit breakers kind of a thing more than they are anything. Okay, looks good. Uh, attitude indicator lights as intended. So I'm a huge fan of making it red, but everybody's a little bit different. Some people will probably want to switch it to turning it on so it gets nice and bright. Honestly, I don't usually bother with it that much. And of course, center lights as desired. I'll put it on bright for now, and you can see it's pretty bright over there. Okay, let's go ahead and check the Acme control. You need this, obviously. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to safely move. We're going to put that in the down position. We're going to flip this one up. Nice. All right, this is the important part. You skip these, guess what you're not doing? Moving. <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead and see the attitude drivers in the down position. We're going to start flipping all these up so we can maneuver the spacecraft. Obviously, if there's an emergency, you're going to have to come up here and shut the individual ones of these off. I've had to click these things off a couple times when we had emergencies. All right, let's go over here to this set of circuit breakers. This kind of reminds me of like a, when you were like a little kid and you'd climb in like an open cockpit of an airplane. You'd just sit here and like mangle every single of the switches, having no idea what you're doing with any of them. And uh, this is literally what you would do. All right, let's go flip over the coax control. Again, I said this would be a little involved. We are starting a spaceship. This is not exactly a 747 here. All right, flip that one on. We're going to come over here. Do, do, do. Again, this is my backup attitude control. We're going to flip on a bunch of your indicator lights. Obviously, you can shut these off if it bothers you. Come over here. We're going to go get our attitude indicator. We have our boost inserter. We have all the sequencing control lights. We have the sequencing lights. You want to see something cool? Watch this. Come over here, and you can actually go boop and turn them all on. You can come down here and turn them all on. Ah, we're going to explode. No, you're fine. The lights work fine. All right. We're going to go ahead and click that off. We're going to click that all the way back on. Looks good to me. We're going to switch over to the high frequency antenna. We're going to come over here. And we're going to turn the record on. We're going to turn on the beacon control. Holy. I'm glad that um, I don't have to do this the old fashioned way. We're going to set this onto the item six. We we'll go over to item six. That's a uh, cage. Again, you don't want this thing rolling on you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoop. There we go. We're going to set this to the primary. Again, when we go over to Apollo later on, it'll blow you away how much work this that thing is to get going. I'm not going to worry about the vault meter right now. Eh, I don't need to change it. It's perfectly fine to be on. Actually, I like to set it on comp. Eh, eh, we'll leave it on that mode. Looks good. Event timer. We're going to set this to the up position. We're going to make sure our two fuel cells are going to be in the warm-up phase. Obviously, you don't want a cold fuel cell. Ah, So that was it as far as uh, getting that pre-flight done. Uh, we started at 1.30, and it's 1.26, so I think we did a really, really nice job. So our battery check is going to be a T minus 50. Click. Fast forward time. Do, 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 do. Again, the battery check, battery check. All I have to say is I'm very thankful to the developer of reentry for creating the world's best uh, time acceleration here, because without it, uh, it'd take us a while. All right, let's do a battery check. Boop. 
Okay, so we're going to come over here. Remember, we're using external power right now. We're going to set this down. So then what you do is you flip this to the voltmeter 6 position, and it'll read you the power. You can see I'm at 21.3 volts. So now what we do is we pop this to the middle position. That should drop. And we do this one down, then we just flip this over there. We're just going to confirm it's at 24. Looks good. Proceed. We're going to set this one back to the middle position. We're going to do the same thing with this one. Uh, 24.3 looks good enough for me. We're going to pop this back up. We're going to set this one to the test position. And we're looking like 24.2. That's perfectly good. And we're going to go ahead and set this one back to the middle position. Batteries checked. Literally, that's all you had to do. Not too bad, right? Okay, we're going to do our fuel cell check next. It's at 45 minutes. All right, fuel cell check time. All right, let's see here. Fuel cell check. This only takes a moment. All right, we're going to turn our fuel cells on. Remember, they've been warming up for about 40 minutes now. We're going to snap this over to the fuel cell position. And we're just going to confirm that it's over 24 volts, which it is. Awesome. Oop, I always set this one backwards. Confirm that it's 24 volts. Looks good. Yeah, looks good. Oh, man, I'm amazed. Whoever worked on these things last did a great job. All right, we're just confirming that these all are about the same. And we're going to snap it to this one, and that one's also the same. I'm so impressed. So the good news is our fuel cells are working beautifully. So we can actually come over here. We can click these all off because we don't need them right now. We can get them again a little bit later on. All right, that checks out. Cool. So now we're going to do our abort check, which is, uh, I like this test. I like this one. So we don't need to do that until we're at 40 minutes away. So we'll fast forward to 40 minutes. Hey, 40 minutes. Look at that. Okay, let's go ahead and set these to the middle positions. And we're going to set the voltmeter to position 8. And it should say 0, which it does. Good. All right, we're going to set these all in the down position now. Again, this is the backup battery. We're just going to confirm the S1, which is what we're set to. Indicates 24, which it does. Awesome. We're going to go back to the batteries, and we're going to set these back to neutral. We're going to, it should be 0 again, which it is. We're going to confirm that the voltmeter set, like was set to 9. It should still say 0. Good, there's no leakage. We're going to go and set these both in the down position. And we're looking for 24 volts. Excellent. All right, uh, we're now going to set this to position 10, and we should be getting 24 again. Nice. We're now going to go ahead and make sure there's no warning lights that are flashing at us. Nope, no, nope, so far so good. Awesome. Now we're going to ask them to do an abort test. Oh, this is fun. So we're going to go ahead and call up our main tower here and say, hey, guys, uh, could you do a quick abort test? Boop. Capsule testing abort. So when this happens, you're going to get a couple warning lights. All the red lights in the world are going to flip on and say, abort lights on. Uh, Roger. Uh, we got an affirmative. The abort looks good. So we're just going to confirm that everything went. They're going to call us back and say, you're ready to abort. Remember, in the Gemini, you're in an ejection seat. <laughs> so it's definitely a fun way to try to get out in a hurry. Okay, so that is all set. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go ahead. We've done fuel cell. Abort check. Internal power begins at T minus 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward time again here. Da, 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 da. Nice. All right. Let's do it. So now we're going to switch to the internal battery. Now, some of you are going to observe the fact that I don't need to do this. I can actually use power from the umbilical basically all the way to the end. But hey, might as well be authentic, right? Switch to internal power. What does that mean? We call them up and say, we're ready for internal power. As soon as you do that, they're going to call you back and let you know that you're now in an internal power. So now we're using the spacecraft's own batteries as well as fuel cells. Usually at this point, I would highly recommend you come down here and just confirm to make sure nothing is misbehaving. Like I can see, obviously, my batteries, uh, we're not using it right now, so it's at zero because the fuel cells are basically the primary. So these are your four fuel cells, and of course, these are your two main buses. Now, when you get to Apollo, this gets a lot more complicated. It's like this entire side of the panel. It's unbelievable. But again, we use batteries as well as fuel cells to get us up into space here. Okie dokie. Let's uh, go back there. Our next thing is going to be pre-flight. That's not until we have five minutes to go. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward time one more time. All right, that's close enough. All right, time to turn the computer on. Click. I feel like when you turn this on in the real world, you hear it go and start making like clicky, crunchy, clacky noises. But unfortunately, we don't get such a side effect. Oh, well. I'm going to go ahead and arm my batteries. Obviously, or I should say my explosives. If you skip that step, guess what doesn't explode when you need to sequence? I'm going to go ahead and flip these on. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to ahead and turn on my suit coolant. Uh, we want to make sure the OBC computer is your check. They look good. Matter of fact, if you just want to have some fun, you can see it works pretty well. Nice. Proceed. We're going to do the computer start. Remember, the computer program one here is the pre-launch program. All that does is load a bunch of trigonometry in, as well as, importantly, it lines our FDAI up. Skip that step, and obviously you're going to have different sorts of issues here. Go ahead and set this to the stop button. Hey, what do you guys think you're doing? Go back to zero. 
I love how you have to set this clock. It's uh, just an interesting little process here. 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Then you can do the seconds. And then, of course, you can do the last bit of seconds. This is such a cool clock. Nice. We're going to be an up. Obviously, I'm not going to click it on now because uh, we're pretty much good to go. Okay, now we're going to go to computer mode one. Remember, this ascent program has to be loaded off of a basically a tape. This takes about 10 minutes. You can see the little lights up here that they're both off because uh, we're not doing any work right there. And now we need to do a radio check. We reach here five by five. And that's it. <laughs> the spacecraft is ready to rock. Now, the interesting thing is you could do that entire thing using the paper checklist for those of you who are a little bit more brave than I am. I personally don't find myself to be that brave. Uh, obviously, you could try it. I don't necessarily recommend it, but um, it, it would be involved. It would be involved, to say the least. Okay, so now that that's all set, there's a couple little things I like to do. I like to run over here and confirm that we have plenty of oxygen on board, which we do. Uh, the H2 is not as important to me because, again, that's what we're going to use for our fuel cells. That's, like I said, not my issue. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that. All right, and everything's looking pretty good. I just want to confirm that that was set correctly. So that looks good, that looks good, that's off. Another thing I like to do is I like to turn on my little propellant gauge. Again, the one on the left is going to be for your OAMs, the one on the right is gonna be for your RCS system. And the nice thing about that is you get a little diagram here which tells you exactly how much propellant you have on board. But other than that, everything on board is ready to rock. I just kinda of gotta sit here, close my eyes for the next three minutes and uh, question my choices here. Again, we're gonna be doing an EVA this mission, so uh, fingers crossed that we didn't miss a single step. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Lift off. Roger, clock, turn Wee! <laughs> Yeah, this, this part is always fun. I love it because uh, when you do like Mercury, you like your climb time is like four minutes tops. Uh, when you're sitting here in Gemini, you can't skip this part. But since you're still on the top of an ICBM, essentially, this thing gets going pretty darn fast. And it impresses me how quick you actually get up into an orbital situation. I also have to think about our poor pilots here that they're getting squeezed pretty darn hard in the seat. Uh, right now, if I actually take a quick look, you can see we're pushing almost two gravities or so, which is, you know, not exactly murderous. It's like somebody it's like yourself sitting on yourself so it can't be too bad but the reality is it's uh, it's a little bumpy it's a little bumpy uh, the neat thing is when you get to apollo though it takes 10 minutes to get into orbit because the craft is just that much bigger and you don't get that amazing thrust weight ratio that you get in this particular version unfortunately for us though is we don't have the nice computer we have the obc which is this thing over here but that is garbage compared to what you get on apollo you get that really 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 nice system over there with like the disc key and like flashes oh i love that stuff all right, I'm gonna do some early EVA here. Oh, look at that, we're just a capsule. I'm not gonna question why that's like that. All right, how are we doing for fuel here? Like I've always said a million times, I'm still super impressed about the fact that um, you actually have a fuel gauge on a spaceship. That just hurts my feelings. Uh, the one on Apollo, by the way, is also very unique because you basically have to dial in how much thrust you have left, which I think is kind of neat. Okay, uh, obviously we're starting to get a little high here. We're about to cross the magical 100,000 foot point, and we just did, and that's it. And we can no longer read our altitude because there's not enough air around us to safely read it. I'm gonna stick my face up against the window. Uh, one of the things I was reading, I saw a great documentary on Gemini a couple weeks ago, and they were talking about you know some of the issues they had as far as you know be able to tighten yourself back into place after doing an EVA. I love the ejection handle, by the way. And just how incredibly absurd and how incredibly dangerous some of this stuff really, really was. You know, this was the early day. We barely knew what we were doing at the time. So, like, when you think about some of this stuff, it's just not oh, amazing. How are we doing here? Damn, we just actually reduced a little bit of gravity there. And I think we're right about to stage in a minute or so. Yep, we're definitely getting to the critical zone. Kind of reminds me of a fuel gauge on a Russian aircraft. Let's go ahead and uh, watch our staging here. Surprise, we had And off we go. 
Look at how cute this stage is. It's like, this is us. You know, this is the part that makes us go in orbit. This is the part that gets us down to the ground. And this is the part that we land on the ground. But this is the little teeny tiny thing that's basically pushing up up the last of the way. And one thing I love, though, is these old style hypergolic propellants, how poisonous these things were and how explosive they were. But hey, if they got us into space, I'm not complaining too much. And again, like I said uh, many, many times, I'm just so fascinated by the fact that I have an actual gauge. Now, can you imagine if I skipped something when I was going through all those steps earlier as far as I like, missed a single switch or something? Now, one thing you can do, and I think this is kind of cool, so I'm actually going to go up here. I'm going to click that light off. I'm going to come up here. Aha! <laughs> I feel like oh, we've just gone into stealth mode here. You can turn on your flashlight at any time, by the way, in case you accidentally did that step. And again, there's the big switch in the back. You can go boop. You can actually shut it off all the way. Let's take a look. The only things you could see at this time are the two little red lights to remind us that the system is working correctly. So obviously, um, don't be that guy who accidentally does that aggressively. Of course, if you want to pretend you're in a submarine, you can come over here and do this, and then click it off. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> look at that. Now we're in submarine mode. Can I not a house? Yeah, you can imagine exactly what that's like. Um, you kind of look out at the window. Too bad it's not like a blue light or something like that. And it's like, oh, it's a more relaxing experience. Obviously, you'd always be using red on the dark side of the planet because it's not going to eat up your night vision nearly as bad as like a bright white or especially like a bright green. So let's go back behind us. We'll click that switch back on a little bit. Again, we're trying to save a little bit of battery here, but I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. Again, just fun little details um, you can always do while you're riding up in space here. The other thing I always like to do is to play with the onboard computer when I'm bored, but that's much more fun in Apollo. All right, we're just about to burn out here. It's going to happen in just a moment. Go ahead and get my checklist out. Uh, during ascent, obviously, there's not much to do here until this light turns on right over here. And then go click. And that's all you got to do. Then you got to turn on the OMs. And then, of course, you have to do all your insertion stuff here. And the interesting thing with the insertion is um, you're supposed to bypass the, radio, uh, the radiator for about 40 minutes. Um, if you accidentally don't hit this button early, uh, <laughs> let's just say our astronaut gets a little cold. So, uh, you know, you can match exactly how comfortable that is. All right, I'm gonna go flip the cryo quantity off. I don't need it right now. Yeah, it is off already. Yeah, I wish that was actually a little tiny bit brighter. <laughs> this will be a very quick mission once we finally get in orbit with this darn thing. There we go. Can I see it? Yeah, I can see it now. Cool. All right, get ready for staging. Interesting thing about this stage is the engine just sort of unceremoniously goes boing, 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 pogo effect. And then we have to actually push the button to go ahead and uh, separate the two stages. All right, so we're going to get an angry warning. We're going to open this one up. We're going to press this button to pop the stage off. And we're going to open this one to go ahead and open up the front of the craft. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so that way we can actually see where we are. So there's the second stage. That's become a permanent part of space now. And there goes our nose, which is going to burn up in the atmosphere. My favorite thing about this is how you have all this, like, you know, this intaglia of wires sort of chilling at the back there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, center this thing out real fast. Open up the OMs real fast. Looks like we have a little bit of delta V to cancel out. Looks like we need to come to the right a little bit. Done. That's it. <laughs> All right, fun fact. Don't you dare set your platform alignment until this red light goes out. Otherwise, you will tumble. It sucks. All right, let's go get going. So first things first, uh, we're going to shut all the batteries off. We don't need them. And we're also going to come over here and we're actually going to disarm all those beautiful explosives that we use to kind of get us into space. We're going to do a sequence check here, which is actually pretty easy. We can go over here. We can click it to the this position. Everything turns red and gets angry at us. What have we done? We're going to come over here. We're going to set it to the amber position. Everything's going to turn glowy. We're just going to make sure the lights still work. It looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and shut that one off just like that. Now, if you go all the way down, you get the red and the greens, which is pretty cool. All right, center that out. And I am happy the way that turned out, actually. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. I'm gonna shut off the secondary oxygen. Again, we don't need this because um, we don't need our little personal spacesuit oxygen. We are perfectly comfortable the way we are, thank you. Okay, so now what we've done is uh, we've gone ahead and insert it. Now we need to think about circularizing. Lucky for us, we do not have to do any alignment because it's a pain in the butt. But we do need to circularize because uh, right now, I imagine we're not terribly well circularized. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the computer, I'm going to switch it to the catch up option. Remember, it takes 10 minutes for this to run. So this is going to take about 10 minutes before we can actually start to do the calculations. Remember, though, we still don't have our attitude scanner working here. Let's go ahead and speed up time to about 42 after. Delightful. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and calculate our appropriate things. So now because this light has gone out, we can actually turn this thing on, thankfully. Switch this over to the Ceph mode, which is going to gently nuzzle the whole spacecraft over once we get lined up. 
And I think it's going to be just a teeny tiny bit down. Nice. That's all I had to take. Okay. So the computer now has uh, calculated our total uh, out of whackness. I know that sounds like a technical term, but it really is. So if I type in 56 and do readout, this will tell me my desired altitude. So if I actually check the map right now, what is my desired altitude? I am 66, 65.95. Okay, so I'm a little low. And my target orbit is quite a bit higher. You can see it's up there at 6669, 6668. So we could actually dial these details in directly if we wanted to. You can see, like I said, we're a little low. Let's go ahead and use the core to read out that other piece. But again, we're interested in EVA today in cold and dark. We're not interested in going too crazy. Let's go ahead and read out how far we're going to have to go ahead and get to our time to Apoapsis. 73. It tells us that we're going to be there in 489 seconds, which is pretty darn soon. If I check our periapsis, I'm going to go check that real quick. And we're going to be there in a little bit longer. So let's go 73, read out, and you can see about 480 seconds to go. And then we're going to be good to go for this next component. So the interesting thing is, and hmm, this is weirding me out a little bit, is the fact that this does not indicate any error at all. That's, uh, that, that's a little troublesome, I'm not going to lie. Oh, good time to spy on the Soviet Union while we're at it. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm somewhat circularized here. Let's see here. Get some orbit information. Could you give me some? We have an inclination. Our periapsis is extremely low. So maybe we want to manually override that. 56, read out. 65, 32. 57, read out. 57, read out. 65, 96. Let's make the other one. 65, 96. Enter. Clear. 57, read out. 65, 96. Clear. 56, read out. 65, 96. 65, 96. Uh oh. Yeah, I was right. Okay, we're good. So that should create an error. Good. Good, 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 good. Much better. Much, much, much better. Okay, so time to apoapsis is 7-3, so hit readout. So we'll be there in eh, 415 seconds or so. That's not too long. Pop this button a few times. And again, uh, usually when you do a burn, you always start half the burn early. So it's going to be th about, let's say, 15 seconds or so is probably going to be a good time to start it. Because again, you get about two each. So go down to 30. We're going to go down to 15, and we're going to go ahead and activate the burn. Make sure our system is turned on before we initiate a burn, and let's do it. We're going to lie out, punch it. So all we're doing now is circularizing. Off we go. Whoops. You got to be careful with the button you mash there. You don't want to mash the wrong one. So we're basically trying to drive this all the way to zero, and then we'll have a nice circular orbit. Looks like I'm drifting a little bit in the other direction also. We can always fix that drift later. Nice. All right, let's continue fixing my forward backwards drift here. Again, all I'm doing is circularizing the orbit. I'm not doing anything fancy here. And I dialed in into the computer the orbit that I was hoping for. Hey, stop drifting. I'm going to get my forward and backwards speed for a set before I adjust. Remember, this is feet per second. This is not a lot. I love the fact you have the knobs where you can do it manually, which blows my mind just a teeny tiny bit here. And I want a nice circular orbit in case I accidentally orbit my astronaut here. Nice, we did it. Hey, zeroed. Nice. So let's see how good of a job we did as far as circularizing orbit here. We're back to C mode. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to do this one and this one. And you can see my per apogee is 229. My perigree is 224. So I did an okay job. You can see how not close these are, but eh, I'm not going to fit with it too much because once you start messing with it, you're never going to get it where you actually want it to be. That's close enough for me. Okay. Now that's all set. That's all set. We could go to rendezvous. We could try to find a Gina, but we're not going to worry about her today. Okie dokie. Time to do the EVA. This is the fun part. Let's go down to a tr uh, transcript. Uh, ah, checklist. There we go. Let's go ahead. Uh, this is done. This woo. Forgot something. Nice. Okay, that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. All right, let's do the EVA thing. Oh, oh, oh I love this step. Okay, so <laughs> this is very unscientific, but we're going to empty the cabin by clicking the switch. So as soon as you pull that handle, the cabin pressure just goes... Very quiet, there's no and just like that, the cabin is completely empty. So now it is literally like if there's like a fire in here, there is no longer a fire in here. Click. All right, proceed. All right, this is slightly terrifying. So what we're going to do now is now that there's no pressure in the cabin, is we're going to open the hatch. I'm just going to kind of look around a little bit here. Kind of study how everything's going. Uh, things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. 
uh, kind of study everything for a second, and uh, that, that's pretty scary. That's pretty scary. So then all we have to do is we have to press the EVA button to float out. Y'all ready for this? And we're out. So you're probably saying, um, could you have done this on the other side of the planet? Wouldn't that make a little more sense? Yeah, I don't disagree. Hmm. Just kind of looking around here. Wee, tumbling. Again, this was a neat little system. And you have a big thing. This is the word enter that kind of lets us float back inside when we're ready to go back inside. I'm actually going to jump back inside, slam the hatch closed for a second here. Uh, we've got plenty of oxygen in our suits. I'm actually going to turn on the secondary oxygen system real quickly here. I'm not going to actually flip on the primary. I just want to wait until we get to the later side of the planet real quickly here. Fast forward time. Wee! There we go. All right, now we can see where we're going again. Flip this thing back off. Pop the hatch back open. Sorry about that, buddy. I didn't mean to scare you. Now we're going to EVA when we can actually see what we're doing. Nice. This is uh, definitely an improvement. I'm going to go ahead and tumble myself upside down here. Whee! <laughs> this is so dangerous. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was on the uh, light side of the planet. I'm actually kind of disappointed here. It's kind of floating around. I'll get back inside. We'll go ahead and slam the lid closed again. I thought it was going to be a little bit brighter outside, but maybe I was wrong. All right, speed up. Whee! There we go. All right, now we're going for a walk. Okay, this time definitely. Hey, I did it. <laughs> okay, so in the old days of Gemini, you actually did this tethered. Right now, I'm completely untethered, which means if I float away, uh, my guy is not getting back inside the spacecraft. Okay, so what you had in Gemini, which blows my mind just a little bit, is you had this little stick. And on the stick, you had these little vents on it, and you had a little trigger. You'd squeeze this thing in order to make this thing go, and basically blast in a certain direction, which means you can go forward or you can go backwards. That's it. So let's go ahead and back ourselves up a little bit here. Let's go ahead and make sure this is set up correctly. I'm just going to make sure my head is set in a direction I can actually use here. Uh, we can go ahead and proceed. We're already outside the thing. I'm not going to worry about it or anything like that. Yeah, I know how we get back inside. Don't worry about it. There we go. Whee! <laughs> and that's it. So we are now floating away. So, of course, uh, we're going to do some reckless flying here. Oh, man, that thing's uh, looking a little worse for wear. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if this thing fired right now? It'd be like, splat. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently, gently push myself to the back of the spacecraft here. Careful. Oh, my gosh. I don't have a tether, so if something goes wrong, we're not coming back. I'm going to get myself some more fuel. <laughs> nice. I'm going to turn myself around here. I'll float away from the capsule. Note, you can't turn, you can't boost sideways. You can only boost forward or backwards. That's my added sound effect just for emphasis here. All right, I'm going to go float. As long as I can click on this, I can't die. <laughs> Look at this. Whoa. Now, one of the things I have not done yet is I haven't tried this in VR, but I'm sure oh my goes my lunch. <laughs> this is so dangerous. All right, I'm going to finish my little tumble here. Hopefully, I didn't kick the capsule for the 30th time. Whee! Ooh, slow myself down here. Rotate this way. And there's my beautiful old capsule. And you can see I'm already starting to gently float away from it. All right, let's go float in this direction a little bit. Now, I've got a pretty good amount of rotation going on here. This is so dangerous. Remember, I can only go forward or backwards. So let me line myself up in this direction a little bit. Ah, you can't even cancel out your rotation. Give myself a little bit of blast of this thing. Hey, it's a little bit better. They actually use this thing as Skylab, believe it or not. So I got about 90 seconds worth of fuel here, but I'm not thrilled with the fact I'm kind of like drifting in that direction a little bit. So I'm gonna back myself up just a little bit. Ooh, oh no. And this is how you get lost in space. Line myself back up with the capsule. Looks pretty good. I love the little window in the thing. It's like nothing to it. Give myself some burst this way. Notice I only have, I've already used five seconds worth of fuel and I haven't done anything. All right, let's climb back inside. Now, when I was reading an interesting thing about this, uh, when they did do those early EVA missions, there was a genuine concern they would not be able to safely get back in the spacecraft and actually be able to tighten themselves in, which is terrifying. All right, let's go ahead and uh, check my, ch I'll go back where this is a post EVA now. Let's go ahead and run this checklist. All right, I have closed the hatch. Uh, cryo selector, you want to make sure we have some oxygen left. One thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to turn on ohms and fix my situation here. Click. So what that's going to do, oh, I just went right through the red zone. Dangerous. 
So what we're going to do now is we're now going to repressurize the spacecraft, uh, basically using oxygen directly. I imagine it is a little cold inside of here now. Uh, let's see, the cabin temperature is somehow 124 degrees. What? Somebody forgot to bypass the radiator. Click. Okay, now we're good. Let's see here. Evaporation. We don't need max flow. It'll be fine. So basically what we're doing is waiting for this needle to get back up to about 5 PSI. Uh, once we hit that number, we can kill that thing. And uh, we're pretty much good to go. And then we can start thinking about landing this thing back on the ground. Uh, notice, by the way, while we're having all that fun, we actually threw our beautiful circularization out of whack a little bit here. It's not bad. I'm not going to panic. What I am going to do is flip it over to TD Prez, though. And I'm also going to call up Central Command and say we'd like to go ahead and retro at our next Apogee. Uh, two hours, 41 minutes. Wonderful. Okay, awesome. So we're just going to pay attention. We went through a lot of oxygen. So when you do the lunar lander with this later on, man, do you go through a lot of air. Let's go ahead and let this thing fill up. we got about 4 PSI right now. Looking pretty good. Going to look at the window. Look straight up. It's a pretty nice day. I mean, it's not bad. It's the best weather Earth has ever had. <laughs> Don't forget to shut the switch off, by the way, when you have filled the out craft up with oxygen again. Otherwise, you'll just slowly run out. There we go. Delightful. All right, shut it off. Click. And we're just making a note. Note, 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 note. So we got about 91.8% eh, of our fuel, our oxygen left. So we're fine. Okay, so we've successfully EVA'd. We managed to get back to the ship. We got plenty of gas left, and uh, we're going to go ahead and set this to five minutes to retro. So retro is super easy. We go over to the computer. We hit clear. We do 19. We press a readout, and it tells us how many seconds we have until we're actually going to have to worry about retro now. Now, notice this doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is because the computer is reading the tape for the next component of this particular flight. So obviously, it's not going to work yet, so don't panic on that. While that's going, of course, go ahead and stop this. Put it to, to standby. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this to exactly five minutes. Now, the goal here, of course, is to give us a little bit more background. But again, not too bad. You can actually re-enter using the OMS, which I think is crazy if you ask me. Set this one down by one click. I'm going to set this one down by seven clicks. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. That's all we had to do. <laughs> now we can actually set the clock to stop, and we can set this to down, and it should leave us alone. So we can turn this thing on later on and get ourselves a five-minute timer. Again, five minutes is going to be the equivalent of 300 seconds on this little display over here. So I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. What I am going to do is pay attention to my cabin temperature. I notice my suit temperature is dropping very rapidly, which is typical. And my cabin temperature is finally coming down. Thankfully. All right. Can we finally use this computer program? Yes, we can, which means we can start actually reading that value again. Nice. So we're going to be coming down in uh, two, three, one, two seconds. Dun, 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 dun. Again, we want to stop on this thing that says about 350 or so. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Slow it down a little bit here. Slow down. Nine. Of course, I left this open, which you're not supposed to do. Four, three, two, one, zero. All right, five minutes to re-entry. Let's begin. All right, first things first. We're definitely going to want to do that. All right, let's run the check. Let's shut off our cooling systems. Seems dangerous, but you actually need that. We're going to make sure everything is set and ready to go. Indicate retro attitude. So this is not going to light up just yet. So when it does happen, oh, we're going to worry about that. So obviously we have a couple moments before we're going to hit that step. We have to make sure everything else is set first. Uh, one thing that I have done that I've, um, I do a little out of order here. I like to turn these switches on early. And it's just kind of a nice little way to kind of prevent that insanity that could happen when it happens. You'll know what I mean when it does. All right. We've got about five minutes to go. This is probably good. Oh, there they go. Click. Ooh, rip. I'm going to go turn on our batteries. Nice. We're going to turn on our fuel cells. We're going to actually going to shut off our power fuel cells completely. We don't need them. We're going to go press the RCS button. This is going to activate our reaction control system. Uh, we're going to actually shut off ohms. We don't need it right now. We're going to break the ohms off. We're going to separate our electrical. We're going to separate our adapter with a loud junk. Hee <laughs> hee. Bye bye. See ya. Nice. All right, we're going to set our computer mode to five. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. And that's all we had to do. 
I'm going to go ahead and close these things out because we don't need them right now. Obviously, things are going to get interesting in a minute. I'm not going to push any buttons. You can see we have about three and a half minutes before things are going to start getting really fun for us. Good idea, by the way, to go ahead and flip on your RCS system. You want to make sure this thing is turned on. It's going to be the only system that can line you up during your descent here. So I'm going to go here. Everything's been set. Looks good. We're going to go see uh, da, 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 30 seconds to retro. There's this little button that you're supposed to arm. I'm going to press the run button here. Obviously, we want to make sure this stuff is all preset long before we actually get to it. I don't need to push this button until the light turns on when this is 30 seconds. So we'll speed up time a little bit here. This is the fun part. <laughs> Gotta love this part. There it is. Push the button once. And you sit there and go, ah. <laughs> Gotta love this part. So we're just kind of sitting here. Everything's fine. Everything just don't have to worry about anything. Nothing's going to happen in the 16 seconds, I'm sure. One last time to make sure you pushed everything. There's a manual retro fire button down here in the event of an emergency. If you don't do this on time, obviously, because for some reason this doesn't fire, you've got bigger problems, as they say. Hey, look at that. Right on time. I swear that never happens. Now, if you look from out back, there's a, each one of our little solid rockets. It's just kind of firing and sucking a lot, last bit of energy out of here. Remember, we use the atmosphere to slow down, not our rockets. You waste a lot of energy if you do it the other way. That's it. <laughs> we did it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back. We are now post-retro at this particular point. We have succeeded in doing this. We need to do our retro jettison. The way we do this is we just turn it on, and then there's this little button we push when the light comes on. And as soon as that happens, you just go boop and pop it, and then you don't have to worry about anything. There it goes. Boop and pop it, and away it goes. That's it. So I'm going to go back, and we have now jettisoned post-retro. Let's go ahead and uh, secure the spacecraft before we re-enter space. All right, we don't need any of that stuff. We're going to definitely arm that, otherwise we're going to have bigger problems. And we're going to go ahead and perform the wait till ox tape is green, computer start. Ah, it's not green, which is funny because the light is clearly green. Oh, well. But we do want to go ahead and do the HF radio checklist while we're waiting for that to turn green. Run. That's it. <laughs> That's all you had to do. All right, now we're just going to keep mashing that button until it's time to get going. Come on. There we go. So now the computer is on automatic. So what's going to happen now, let me just look out the window real quickly. You can see we're facing backwards, and we're on our way down to the Amiga and shut the... Hey, look at that. I can grab the rocket booster again. Now we're just going to kind of smack into the atmosphere at high speed here and uh, hope everything goes well. Not bad. This has been a pretty good flight. I mean, like, this is the best flight I've had like, in a while, to be honest. Uh-oh. I tried to skip ahead, and it wouldn't let me. I wonder why. Let's see here. No, it looks normal to me. I don't know what, you're, what the problem is here. Let's go over here. Oh, it's, everything seems to be... Oh! Hey! Look what's happening to my orbital speed. Look what's happened to my apogee. Uh-oh. So right now we're pushing about a quarter G, which is... You could feel it. It wouldn't be like murder a quarter G, but it would definitely be enough to make you go, what is that? Kind of keep cruising here. Everything feels pretty good. Kind of look out the back. You know, the fun thing here is, remember, the RCS system is rotating us slowly, or at least it's supposed to be rotating us slowly. Sometimes I have to grab control away from the computer because the thing doesn't work properly. But that's all right. Switch to at mode. Eh, you can see we're just slightly off, but our rate control is looking pretty good. Yep, there's the RCS doing its job. All right, acceleration is still only about a quarter G, so we're hitting the atmosphere, but we're not really ramming the atmosphere. Not yet. Uh, that'll be shortly, however. Now, the fun thing is, if you go to the map, you can actually see what's happening to your orbit as you descend here. Get bounced around just a teeny tiny bit. Nothing too bad. Again, I'm so happy everything's working properly. Or at least I did everything correctly this time. We better switch to re-entry lighting. All right, re-entry lighting ready. <laughs> Turn my flashlight on. Hey, so far we got everything. How are we doing as far as temperatures? A little, eh, my suit's getting a little freaking cold here. I'm going to bypass the radiator, trying to make myself a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, I'm starting to bleed that speed. What are we up to now? We're up to about half a G, which is, it, it's enough. It's enough. I'm glad I'm not EVA right now. I've made that mistake in a different game. There it is.
Sounds like somebody's knocking to get in. I don't know what the deal with that is. Whoa, look at the acceleration! Oh my, that's 12 Gs. Oh man, 12 Gs. How am I still conscious? <laughs> I think that's at the top of the needle. Oh, that was fun. I wonder if we ever made it into the atmosphere here, because as far as I'm concerned, everything's just red. How are we doing? Yeah, 1,200 meters per second. Surfing. Hey, this thing's going to the Smithsonian when I'm done with it. Still tucking four or five Gs. Still blackout territory. No idea what my altitude is, although I can see my... Ah, what's this? Atmosphere. What a happy day. All right, drogue out. Again, that's this little light right here. When this light turns on, you push the other button right next to it. Straighten this out a little bit. There's probably shut my RCS off. I don't think I need it right now. Normally, you do a little propellant dump to try to prevent you from having that accident. But yeah, we just basically tumble on our backs. That seems safe. And I'm still pouring, uh, what is this, 2 Gs right now? That's, that's troublesome. I feel like this isn't correct. Got the window here. Hey, there's the lovely ocean. It looks like we had a pretty successful landing today, despite me, uh, you know, eating atmosphere. I think we came in a little steep, not going to lie. I felt like that was a little bit rougher than it should have been. Scent rate is uh, uh, 25,000 feet per minute, and hopefully my ears don't pop too much. Did my suit warm up? No, I'm still freezing. Oh, well. Kind of continue my little glide down, and uh, once we hit the water, we'll go ahead and call the video. As usual, hopefully you found this stuff fun. Like I said, I had a really neat video originally where we did uh, the Agena mission, where we tried to catch up to it. And to be honest, it was just too much. I couldn't reliably catch up to it. Every time I tried it, like the circulation would be off. And then I found out that that simplified setting wasn't working. Um, at this point, though, I think we'll probably do a video dedicated to flying this thing in VR because I think that'd be fun. I found a really neat trick as far as stabilizing VR footage to try to answer that question that some folks have been having. And uh, we'll try to see if we can do that a little bit better. And after this, it, it's off to Apollo. Uh, Apollo is going to be um, Apollo is going to be a little different. Uh, that's definitely a much, much, much more serious spacecraft. I'm not saying that negatively. It actually is a more automatic spacecraft than especially this one. This one's very manual, and the computer on board is not what I consider to be good. But hey, it's what we got, you know? This has been a very successful flight. I didn't float off into space by accident. I didn't burn up in the atmosphere. This is a good day. This is a definitely a good day. The fun thing is I never fly from this side, so it's like, hmm... I could use this controller, I guess, but you know how that goes. What's the switch? Boop. Ejects. I like how the only warning lights we have here are just things like just giving you a heads up that, uh, yeah, stuff's getting a little hot. Switch back to the other side. What do we got for altitude here? About 600 feet to go, so we're almost there. I'm going to go sploop, and then, of course, remember, you have to press the landing attitude button. If I go back to checklist, I can do landing if you prefer. Run. I've done all that already. We need to get to... I've already pushed that button. Proceed, we need to do landing attitude once we get to 500 feet, which is, uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's see here, it's about, okay, looks good. 500, close enough. Boop. So what this does is this puts us sideways. Like, I can't float outside, like you can't, ah! Let me see if I can show it from the side, there you go. It actually tips the entire capsule this way, so it makes it easier to get out. And uh, you can see my little uh, protective cover there that I had earlier. It's uh, just kind of sticking out there, just sort of chilling. And the back side doesn't look that burnt. So I think we actually hit it at a pretty decent angle today. My real question is, how is it that I don't have any cords holding me up in the air? I guess the whole idea is we're sitting here like this. All right, as usual, uh, hopefully you guys uh, had fun with this video. I think this is enjoyable. We'll do a video with this particular craft over in a VR next. Like I said, I've come up with some ways to stabilize the footage. It's also known as Adobe Premiere. And uh, we'll try that out and see if I can make things a little bit smoother for you. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we're going to start looking at Apollo, which, oh my, <laughs> that, that, that's a lot of spacecraft. I'm going to have to skip the initial boost each time because it takes so long to get that thing into space compared to especially Mercury, which is you snap your fingers. Wait for the splash. And I drowned. Nice. All right, folks, hopefully you enjoy this. I'll see you next time. Enjoy.